Welcome back to the show. Now, keeping your skin looking healthy can be a challenge, and in the current climate, it can be even twice as tough. Yes, face masks, indoor heat, and hand gel are all taking their toll. But how can we keep that vibrant look? Well, my next guest is here to help you retrieve that glow, and she even has a nice regime for us to follow tonight as we relax after a hard week of work. Ronnie Callahan, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Elaine. Thanks a million for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, um, since COVID kicked off, we've a, a new raft of problems with our skin that we never had before. What are the main issues facing people? I think one of the main issues that seems to be facing people now is a lack of routine. Um, we tend to be leaving things out of our routine that we would usually do. So for an example of this is people are leaving out their morning cleanse. So people aren't necessarily always washing their face in the morning because they're not going anywhere. Um, but your morning cleanse is one of the most important steps in your routine. You're preparing your skin for the day. This is often being left out. I can see a lot of clients coming to me and I can see their skin is regressing slightly from these changes and lack of routine. And also people aren't wearing SPF because they're at home and they don't think that they need it. But of course we do. I'm shocking for not wearing SPF. Why is it so important if you're not venturing outside the door? I tell you, because there's UV light coming from the sun all year round. There's UVB rays. So when you're tanning yourself in Santa Panza, if we ever get back, um, you're burning your skin with the UVB ray. But during the winter, even when you're inside, there's UVA rays coming through the windows, coming through the clouds, penetrating penetrating through the skin and the UVA ray that's actually the one that ages us so yeah. we're surrounded basically so you just better lash it on and hope for the best basically because we all need a bit of it now mask acne yeah mask acne I know every single person I know yeah. male or female we're getting the little spots around your chin even if you never were prone to them before it's happening now like is there anything you can do just to to, to, to stop it in its tracks so, like why are we still getting it so wrong I know. Um, I always say to people, face masks are the knickers of the face. So <laughs> don't re-wear them. Yeah. You know, like you wouldn't re-wear yesterday's knickers. So don't wear re-wear yesterday's mask, you know. Um, so wash them just as often if you're wearing re-wearable -re -re ones. Um, if you're wearing disposable ones, that's a little bit better. Uh, but with regards to skincare itself, look, if you're getting breakouts on the skin from wearing a mask, it's usually going to be due to a buildup of bacteria. We need to try and kill the bacteria. When you whip off the mask when you get home, I'd be cleaning the skin at that stage. Don't wait till 11 or 12 o'clock. Um, and using a wash that has salicylic acid in it is going to help to break down any oil that's kind of built up on the skin. Um, so that's a really good option. Lots of people as well are getting, uh, you know, they're getting sensitive skin from wearing the mask because of that bit of friction. Um, so wearing um, a nice kind of a hydrating moisturiser underneath seems to kind of sort it out. I've had a few clients come to me with it um, and either one option or the other has helped the majority of them you know yeah and I suppose a lot of people that their skin is changing because I've been constantly covered as well I've dry skin on my cheeks for the first time in my life and that's probably why everything's just chafing and getting absorbed into the mask where before it wouldn't have and now it's Friday we're like those of us who, who are still uh, working it's time to kick off the heels lie back and just relax for the evening is there anything we can do I mean you we 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 you uh, made a little cunning plan for us, haven't you, of, to what five I things do. people can do tonight to make their skin that bit better? I do. I always have a cunning plan, Elaine. Um, so the plan for this evening is, um, the minute you're finished watching this, get a couple of dessert spoons. I have stolen two out of the drawer just for this. Um, grab a couple of dessert spoons and pop them into the fridge now. Um, if you have a jade roller, so one of these little bad boys that you can buy online, um, you can pop him into the fridge either. So that's your step one. Step two when you're finished work this evening uh, would be to give the skin a really, really good cleanse. Uh, we don't wash our faces properly. Like I'm always ranting on to people. People are asking me for what's the best eye cream? What's the best mask? And I'm like, well, did you wash your face this morning, Mary? Because you're not getting a recommendation until you're washing your face twice a day. So we're going to give the skin a really, really good cleanse. If you have a cleanser with glycolic acid or salicylic acid in it, pop that on and leave it on for about 60 seconds and let it work on the skin and then rinse it off. Uh, then you're going to pop on a face facial oil or a moisturiser if you don't have facial oil. Everyone has a moisturiser and a spoon, so this is literally for everybody. Um, get your two cold spoons after you've moisturised your skin and you're going to start in the middle of your face and you just want to draw them outwards like this. Um, and you're, that's going to help to drain out any sort of lymphatic fluid. But the coldness of the spoons is called uh, cryotherapy, so it cools the skin down. Now, you could spend €100 Euro on cryo globes, but you look at everyone has spoons, you know, they're free. Um, jade rollers, you can use one of those as well. You don't need to put the moisturiser on before you use this because you want that bit of surface tension. 
you start in the middle face face and you want to just drag it out and it is so cooling now i'm absolutely roasted i'm surrounded by radiators here and um, so this is actually gorgeous so you want to drag that right out um always towards the ears and then down the neck like this and then to finish it all off you're going to finish your routine with your nighttime skincare routine so you're going to apply whatever serums whatever moisturizers you usually use at night you want to put that on because your nighttime routine and your morning routine they're the most important thing they're more important than any facial you give yourself they're more important than any 200 euro treatment you get in the salon this this is something that happens 14 times a week so it's going to have the most benefit to you yeah. Um, now, uh, we've got some questions in for, from some of our viewers for you as well. Like The first one is, uh, Gráinne, any tips on dealing with rosacea on my face, mostly around the nose and cheek area? I've tried changing skin products several times and various facials in salons. I'm currently using creams and gel prescribed by my GP. Green cream under makeup to hide the redness, but the skin feels very hot at times after exercising, shower, etc. Any advice? Absolutely. So one thing that's really good for rosacea is actually what I just showed you there with the cool spoons or with the jade roller, because that's going to help to reduce the inflammation. Um, obviously, following the advice of your doctor, uh, rosacea has been diagnosed by your doctor and you are under treatment. So it's important to do that. With regards to skin care, then you want to look for something that has vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E in it. You want to take some omega supplements internally to help moisturize and reduce inflammation from the inside out. Um, and also glycogen. Glycolic acid is actually really good for rosacea. Uh, loads of people will probably disagree with me on that one, but I've had amazing results for lots of clients uh, with the gradual and um, slow use of a glycolic acid on the skin. So they yeah. would be good ideas. Now, and I, I mentioned um, my dry skin earlier on, but I'm finding this problem, as is one of our viewers. Any um, good night creams or serums that won't cause breakouts? A lot of them are too oily on my skin. I find that as well, that sometimes if you're, your skin, you do want a really moisturizing boost but it, it can, can congest your skin quite a lot what would you recommend uh, especially if your skin is dehydrated like you're describing there Elaine, from wearing the mask using a lovely hyaluronic acid serum is going to help to hydrate the skin and then when you're looking for moisturizers if you've got an oilier skin you should try a go more go for two serums on the skin as opposed to a moisturizer a serum is going to penetrate the skin further it's going to do more work for you. A, ser a, a moisturizer just sits on the surface. You know, it just sits on the very, very surface. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't really do much for you. Um, so you're better off getting getting a couple of serums. See if that will hydrate your skin enough. If you do feel as though you need a moisturizer on top, go for something very, very lightweight. And it yeah. doesn't have to be expensive. Yeah. Don't spend and, too much on a moisturizer. Yeah, and you, there is this misconception that you have to spend hundreds and hundreds of euros to get a decent uh, a night cream or something like that. But it's not, it's not always the case. You mentioned salicylic acid. Um, and uh, many other acids that are in a lot of products and they're not really expensive. Is that what you should be looking at as you get older, really, to keep yourself looking youthful, these particular ingredients in your products? Yeah, 100%. So if ageing is a concern, you should always look for three things, basically. SPF is number one, and that's your number one priority. Number two would be the use of vitamin A. And then the third one would be an exfoliating acid, like you just mentioned there, so your glycolic acid or lactic acid um, and salicylic then if you are oily. Um, this misconception about really expensive skincare, if somebody is telling you that you have to buy this moisturiser that costs 82 euro, um, it's probably because they're trying to sell it to you. So uh, try and seek some independent advice um, and that way you'll know. You'll be able to use the right product for you, whether it's 20 euro or 80 euro, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and, uh, and and finally today, um, I want to ask you about eye creams because I know a lot of people are concerned about that because all anyone can see at the moment are people's eyes. How important are actual eye creams? Because I've heard conflicting reports that some people don't recommend them at all. Like, what, what's the proper usage? So what I would usually say to people is eye creams are lovely, but what's the rest of your routine like first? So if you're cleansing your skin or washing your face, I call it, cleansing sounds like a luxury. If you wash your face twice a day, if you use a serum, if you use an SPF and the eye area is still an area of concern, then look for an eye cream at that point. A lot of people will ask me for an eye cream recommendation, but they don't even wear SPF. So point you know what I mean you're, you're rubbing 80 euro under the eye area and then you're not protecting it from the sun and the sun is going to age it so I would get the core kind of fundamentals of your skin routine right if your eye area is still an area of concern after you've used some high quality good skincare for a prolonged period then go for an eye cream and look for a recommendation look for something that's hydrating and has vitamin A in it so you'll be laughing look well 
Ronya, thank you so much for joining us today. I have to admit, I do have those cryo globes I got them the other day, and they are brilliant. So the cold spoons, uh -huh. I know, work. But the only thing about the cryo globes, they stay cold for about three hours, so you can do it for ages. And I did it they last do. night. It's so relaxing on the skin, the cold spoons or the cryo globes. It really, really is. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. We've talked.